Okay, so let's talk about the third term forces. I think scope is getting very lengthy. We have to see the applications also. So let us write down forces, the last term. And please do have a look at this because all these terms I will use again and again. So we are talking of forces. So definitely a push or a pull is a force, right? Anna? A push or a pull is a force. And uh, when we uh, talk of forces, forces are of different types. Sometimes you call it as gravitational force. Sometimes you call it as electric force, magnetic force, anna? whatever friction, uh, normal force, anna? kuch bhi aap keh sakte But in fluid mechanics, we will call them as surface forces or body forces. What do, will you call? body force and surface force. There will be only two types of forces. One is body force and surface force. Now the question is what is body force? What is surface force? So let us say this is me with a very big tummy and I'm standing on the ground. Okay. So the body that we are talking about is me. So I have mass of 85 kg. So definitely I will have some weight which will act in downwards direction because of Earth's gravity. And uh, I think this weight you call as mass into acceleration due to gravity. Now it's like this weight. So basically I'm made of a lot of particles and all these particles have some weight. So some of all these weights, some of all these forces, that is the total weight of the body. Is that right? That is the total weight of the body. I am made of lot of particles. Every particle has some weight. So some of weights of all the particles will become the total weight of the body. So what you can say is that the weight is distributed over the entire volume of the body. The weight is distributed over the entire volume of the body because it is acting on each and every point of the body. Okay? So this is your weight. Now because of the weight, is it like that I am going down in the ground? No, no. Basically, the ground is stopping me by applying some normal reaction. And the normal reaction will act on my on the soles of my shoe. Right? So basically I'm wearing some shoes. I'm wearing some shoes. So what the ground will do? The ground will apply normal reaction on the surface of my shoe. And also I'm surrounded by air. So you can also say that air is applying some force on my surface, which you call as pressure, I think. Is that right? Okay, now let us suppose I take a jump. Okay, let us suppose I take a jump and I am in air. So this is me and there is some gap between me and the ground. Now can you tell me what are the forces acting on the body? Initially the forces were weight, normal reaction and the pressure of atmospheric air. Now what are the forces acting on this body? I think there will be weight which will bring the body back. Anna? So that weight will act in downward direction. But what about normal reaction? Is there any normal reaction? No, very good. Very good. If there is no contact, Anna? suppose you are standing on weighing machine and you suddenly make a jump. So on the weighing machine, the reading will become zero because normal reaction is zero. Very good. So normal reaction will become zero, but the weight will still act. So what happens is, that the forces which act on the body because of gravitational field, magnetic field and electric field. Those are known as body forces. The forces which act on a body because of gravitational field, electric field and magnetic field. Those are known as body forces. And these forces are actually acting on each and every particle of the body. These forces are actually acting on each and every particle of the body. So weight is one of the examples, okay? But the forces which are applied by surrounding mediums, okay? 
so ground is my surrounding medium ground and i are in direct contact so i will call ground as my surrounding medium similarly this air is in direct contact with me i will call it as surrounding medium but that board and me we are not in direct contact so i will not call it as surrounding medium ha huh, sorry of, actually you are correct it is not necessary that weight and normal reaction are always equal they can be different also if you are standing in a lift normal reaction is greater than your weight if it if the lift is accelerating upwards if the, if the lift is accelerating upwards if the lift is deaccelerating then your normal reaction is less than your weight okay it's like this clear now check who is applying normal reaction normal reaction is applied by ground where it is applied it is applied on the surface of the body and when it is applied when there is direct contact between the two are you getting it so the force is applied by surrounding medium on the surface of the body by direct contact they are called as surface forces is that clear so there are two types of forces one is body force and the other one is surface force body forces mean gravitational force magnetic force electric force and surface force means the force applied by surrounding medium on the surface of body because of direct contact so normal reaction is a surface force what about this pressure force is it a surface force yes pressure force is also a surface force because who is applying it air is applying it where it is applying it is applying on the surface of the body by direct contact so please understand what are body forces and what are surface forces okay now check now have a look what i have is on a ground there is an object like this okay and i am pushing the body ahead with some force surface force money that is also a surface force because actually it's a pressure force theek okay? hai do not worry we will derive it buoyancy force it's a pressure force only theek okay? hai now check i want to understand what are the forces applied by ground on the body so basically you will say that sir the weight of the body is acting downwards but the ground will stop it how the ground will stop it by applying normal reaction on the lower surface also when the body is moving ahead there will be a friction force applied by the ground on the surface of the body so normal reaction and friction force are these acting on the surface of the body i think yes who is applying them the ground is applying them how it is applying because of direct contact so not only normal reaction but the friction force is also surface force so what you will say the total resultant surface force applied by ground on the body fs is actually equal to under root of n square plus f square am i right am i right the total surface force applied by body is actually normal reaction plus friction force normal vector plus friction force yes very good and this normal force acts perpendicular to the body while the friction force acts uh, uh, normal force acts perpendicular to the surface while the friction force acts parallel to the surface so these we we are already calling it as normal force but these we will call them as shear forces ha na always remember a friction is a shear force only no aditya they are different they are different check what i am saying force acting on the surface of the body that is surface force who is applying it the surrounding medium is applying it on it yes now check the statement of saurav aditya check the statement of saurav saurav is totally correct he saying that when we talk of uh, suppose i am a particle i am a charged particle okay i am made of charged particles and someone places me in an electric field so electric force will act on each and every particle of mine so what is the total electric force it is sum of all the electrical forces 
all the particles of this body. The particles which are on the surface as well as the particles which are inside the body. They will face an electric force. So such forces are known as body forces because they act on entire part, volume of the body. But when we are talking of surface forces, they act only on the surface of the body. Okay, now check. I think the normal force is acting on the entire area of this surface. Right? Normal force is acting on the entire area of the surface. So what you say? You say normal force per unit area. That is the distribution of force on the surface. You call it as normal stress. And similarly, the shear force per unit area. That is the distribution of shear force. That will be called as shear stress. So what we have is, we have that the normal force is actually distributed on the entire surface which you will denote by normal stress and similarly shear stress, shear force will be distributed on entire surface which you will denote by shear stress. Now since we are going to, we are studying fluid mechanics so later on after uh, half an hour maybe, not half an hour, after some time the normal stress will be called as pressure while shear stress will be called as viscous stress. You are talking of fluids. You are talking of fluids. In case of fluids also, there are normal stresses which we call as pressure and there is shear stress which we call as viscous stress. Okay, so always remember normal stress is responsible for tension and compression. That is linear strain and shear stress is responsible for shear deformation shear strain that is change in shape so this leads to this leads to linear strain and this leads to shear strain <coughs> okay so this is a very small idea about uh, the three terms that is motion deformation and uh, forces obviously these terms are very much elaborated and their relationships are very much developed which you will learn in soil strength of materials but in strength of materials what you do is you study the motion deformation and forces for a solid body if you are doing it for fluids that is water and air if you are studying the motion deformation and force of water that becomes fluid mechanics uh, I don't have a cup over here but I will show you okay check this is the initial shape of water in the bottle. Initial shape of water in the bottle. I will tilt it. I think there is some change in shape, right? Initially the shape was like cylinder. Now the shape is like some kind of trapezium. Anna? So there is a deformation in water mass. So study of force, motion and deformation of water mass that will become fluid mechanics. And this is what we are going to do in the entire subject. I will only talk about motion, deformation and forces in terms of fluids and not in terms of solid mechanics. So basically this subject is the brother of strength of materials. Okay. Uh, so is that clear? Everything? Is it clear? What is fluid mechanics? It is simply the study of motion, deformation and forces on a fluid mass. What is a fluid mass? It is liquid and air. Is that clear? Okay. So, now let us talk about the application of the subject. You have got an idea of what we are going to discuss. It is a stress, strain and motion. Okay. So, you are going to talk about stress, sigma and tau. You are going to talk about strain, epsilon and phi. And you are going to talk about motion that is velocity and acceleration. So, this is what we are going to do in the entire subject. But the question is, what is the use of this subject? What are the applications of the subject? Uh, Saurabh, actually in this case we do not need much definitions. Definition you will need when I will talk about fluids. Anna? I will write it down. Do not worry, there will be definitions in slides also. Definition you will need when we are talking of viscosity, when we are talking of surface tension, then it will be there. Okay. Right now since it's very basic, that's why I have not given to you. This is very basic. Okay. So any ideas? Where do you use fluid mechanics? Is there any system uh, or device which is developed with the concepts of fluid mechanics? 
is there anything in this room which is developed by fluid mechanics can you give me any examples please applications of the subject what are the applications of the subject if you know the application of the subject actually it becomes very uh, the subject becomes very interesting okay definitely uh, uh, abhay very good uh, breathing is one example of fluid mechanics hydraulic brakes are also example uh, okay so what i am saying is uh, see what happens is you are going to learn a lot of mathematics in the coming uh, few uh, lectures and if you know the application of that mathematics these things become a little easy so today i will discuss a few applications i will not spend much time on them only like one minute half minute on every applic on a few applications but whenever a topic is going to come and that topic has a very good example of application which you see in your daily life then i will discuss it okay so few applications i will discuss in the chapters only maybe in form of numericals maybe in form of examples and but definitely in gate exam these applications might not be asked okay so few applications i have got and applications we will discuss only to arouse your interest yes so we have got some example someone is saying breathing are very good pneumatics hydraulic systems very good hydraulic brakes aerodynamics basically aerodynamics and uh, blood pressure flowing pipes jet propulsion yes very good okay 3d tissue printing is going on and need of fluid mechanics and circulation of non newtonian fluids okay theek hai very good so you guys have given some applications what about fan is fan a fluid mechanics application in your rooms i think fan is one of the examples no one discussed it ha ha na not abs basically hydraulic brake theek hai abs is uh, you can uh, say it's an iteration theek uh, hai so uh, okay so you have given me some applications so what happens is uh, that whenever i start a subject i always discuss the applications first just to arouse the uh, excitement among you that this subject is not only going to give you the uh, marks in gate exam but actually these subjects are the key to the future the key to a modern world the key to a developed world these subjects are the future so when we talk of fluid mechanics actually our life is highly dependent on them highly dependent on them our existence that is how the life exists on earth our comfort that is you for comfort you need lighting you need ac and fan uh, if you are staying in leh ladakh you need a heater okay so our comfort uh, comfort also means uh, communication transportation right ha na and uh, lifestyle okay so <coughs> nature and development all these aspects are related to fluid mechanics health care and uh, body nourishment also you can say okay what is it existence of life uh, comfort transport okay uh, health care and body nourishment i think these are five major aspects of life right so these are all related to fluid mechanics extremely related to fluid mechanics and generally i start with human body so i think on your secondary screens you can see a system which system is this guys by the way the name is written it's cardiovascular system it is talking about your heart that is arteries and nozzles right ha na very good cardio cardio system so actually when we talk of cardio system it is mainly heart arteries and veins so what happens is that every tissue has millions and millions of cells human cells ha na tissues i hope you know tissues so in bodies there are different types of tissues are there organs are there ha na and uh, these organs are made of billions and billions of cells inside which there is nucleus mitochondria all of them i don't know much about it ha huh? human cells now every cell is actually performing some action and for that action it needs oxygen it needs nutrients not only this when that action is performed when the biological reaction happens in the cell it will release some waste also 
it will release some carbon dioxide also so basically that cell it needs oxygen and nutrients for biological processes and then the waste that is carbon dioxide and other stuff it has to be flushed out so for this the god who is the best engineer what he has done is he or she they have done is they have laid a network of pipes throughout our bodies our body so in our body everywhere there are pipes which you call as arteries and veins very good uh, yes shridhar is right man is the best robot in the universe if aliens are not there okay man is the best robot so what god has done is he has laid a network of pipes he or she has laid a network of pipes throughout our body and these pipes are known as arteries and veins and the blood flows through these pipes now the blood acts as a carrier of oxygen so blood what it does is it absorbs oxygen in the lungs and then it supplies through to the body okay so blood it gives the oxygen and absorbs the carbon dioxide now the blood again goes back to the lungs and from the lungs carbon dioxide goes out of the body okay so basically we need the circulation of blood then only the cells will be able to receive the nutrients and eject the waste am i right hai na any doubt in this now in our body there are billions and billions and billions and billions of cells and all these cells require oxygen continuously so you need a very good amount of blood flow this means there should be a very powerful pump who is going to supply that blood and that pump is your heart so actually our heart is a double positive displacement pump what kind of pump double positive displacement pump so if someone asks me what is the meaning of positive displacement pump and why we are calling it as double so actually the heart has four chambers okay i'm just making a rough diagram so this chamber you can call it as uh, i think this is my left you know so this you can call it as left atrium check i'm standing and this is my heart left side and uh, this is your right atrium then you have a right ventricle and left ventricle theek hai and i think it's given on the uh, figure also okay so what happens is that veins it's written na in the figure vena cava superior vena cava and inferior vena cava these are veins these veins what they do is they bring blood from the body the blood which has already absorbed carbon dioxide okay so basically the blood with waste the blood with waste it is brought to heart by veins and from the right at atrium it goes into the right ventricle through a one way valve so here is a here there is a valve okay now this right ventricle is actually a pump this right ventricle is actually a pump it is like a pichkari let's see what a pichkari is so i i i hope all of you play holi so in holi we use a pichkari like this it has a nozzle in the front and if you will open it then you will see a plunger like this am i right ha na now what you do to play holi you push the, push it out first you dip this inside water and then you push it out so when you will push it out the volume inside will increase and there will be a partial vacuum so outside the pressure is high here the pressure is low so from the outside the water will come inside hai right? na and then what you will do is you will push it back this volume will decrease therefore the pressure inside will increase now this high pressure will push the water outside and when the water will go out through the nozzle high pressure will be converted into high velocity is that right i think this is how holy pichkari functions when you push pull the plunger outside the volume inside increases so inside the pressure decreases that's why water comes inside and you when you push it the pressure inside decreases because of high pressure the water tries to go outside and this is a nozzle the nozzle will give velocity to the water it's continuity equation basically a1 v1 equal to a2 v2 so such devices are known as positive displacement devices which operate by increasing or decreasing the volume 
okay how is pressure generated by increasing and decreasing the volume similarly the right ventricle is also a positive displacement pump so when the heart beats now this volume increases expands and contracts so when the volume expands the blood comes inside the blood blood comes inside and when this contracts actually the blood goes to the lungs now in the lungs this blood will absorb oxygen and release carbon dioxide and lungs are also lungs are also positive displacement pump but they are positive displacement pump for air okay this oxygen transfer occurs by diffusion and i know nothing about it this occurs by diffusion now because of the pressure created by right ventricle the blood will go to the lungs and then come back to the left atrium and the left ventricle is also a pump so what will happen when it will expand the blood will come inside from a one way valve and when it will contract the blood will go to the body through arteries okay so this is how an heart functions and uh, as fluid mechanics uh, as fluid engineers short term okay as fluid engineers what you can do you can understand the network of pipe in the body what is the diameter of these pipes what is the length of these pipes what is the friction factor so to make the blood circulate how much pressure is required but for this first of all we need to understand the uh, pumping requirement of the body ha right? na that we cannot understand a biological guy will do it a biological guy will tell you that how much oxygen has to be supplied and for 1 liter of oxygen this should be the blood flow rate so blood flow rate comes from biology okay once you know the blood flow rate developing relation between blood flow rate diameter length and heart that is done by fluid engineer mechanical or civil engineer and this is actually a very hot topic of current research i will not tell you why you can do research on it i will just show you one image later on so this is actually a very hot topic of rehabilitation and currently in the modern world we have the technology to do all the research on heart why this is a hot topic why this is a difficult topic because first of all the blood has a very typical nature it is not a normal fluid it is not like water or air it is something called as pseudoplastic fluid and secondly the arteries and veins they are not rigid pipes they are flexible pipes so with the change in pressure actually the diameter also fluctuates heart beats na heart beats so when it will expand when this will expand the pressure will decrease when it will contract the pressure will increase so there is pressure fluctuation which you call as pulse heart beat ha na so what i was telling ha huh. so because of the heart beat the diameter of arteries and veins also keeps on changing so this is the hot topic of study nowadays and lot of iits are doing study on it so once you go through the gate exam you can join this field also now the question is that sir why this is a hot topic because of these things this is what we want to do in the later on stages of technologies we want to develop the artificial organs so that whosoever has a problem of heart or has a problem of lungs or some other organ we can replace it by these machines and that guy will behave as a as a perfect human like he or she does not have any kind of disease and these things can make us super humans also why we want to turn into super humans because energy resources are depleting down very fastly and pollution is also increasing and there might be a possibility that in the future we have to go out of earth and right? so all these things are there very complicated stuff uh, you can say can call it as conspiracy uh ha uh -huh. it looks like an alien but actually it's a rendering of uh, some design theek okay? hai so i got it from somewhere uh, let's not discuss much about it but these things we want to develop and the main thing is rehabilitation so many people are facing so many diseases and because of that their life is become hell and everyone has the chance to live right and god has given everyone the chance to live so why can't they live properly so we want to replace the bad organs with the artificial ones so we want to design artificial hearts and artificial lungs yes very good love i will give you example of civil engineering also very good example you know 
like we designed the aerodynamics of a Ferrari, similarly you design the aerodynamics of Petronas Towers also in Singapore, okay, skyscrapers. So we will discuss that also. Similarly is our respiratory system and uh, the lungs are also positive displacement pumps. They expand, they contract, so you inhale, air comes inside, air goes outside. So what is the relationship between flow of air? I mean, uh, you do not feel like this. Uh, you do uh, while breathing you do not feel that oh oxygen has become less i am not able to feel breathe hana? there is a continuous supply of oxygen so actually the frequency of uh, contraction and expansion the length of the uh, pipe the diameter of the pipe and the flow rate that relationship comes from fluid mechanics only and if you understand this then only you will be able to design proper devices proper life care systems so whosoever is involved say in making of pacemaker he has to study fluid mechanics then only he will be able to make pacemaker now what is pacemaker so a lot of people throughout the world they have a problem of cardiac arrest cardiac arrest means that the heart is not receiving proper power and therefore it is not able to contract and expand properly now the contraction and expansion decides the blood flow rate it should neither be too high nor be too low so what they do is they make something known as pacemaker it gives electrical discharges now if the electrical discharges are high then the fluctuation will be more and again that will be a problem if the electrical discharges are low then the fluctuation will be less again there will be a problem so firstly we need to learn fluid mechanics then only we can decide the power required by heart and then only we can decide how much electrical discharge has to be given. So a lot of people who are involved in life care systems, designing life care systems, they have to understand fluid mechanics and without that we cannot do it. Ah yes, Shredar you are right. Nowadays a lot of materials are coming and graphene is one of them. So okay, so this is one example. Now. I told you earlier also in the nature a lot of phenomena are there which are explained by uh, fluid mechanics and definitely this is one of them. This is the image of uh, Vayu. Uh, I hope you are able to make out that is the map of India right and uh, on the left hand side of the map we have the eastern coastline Gujarat is there. Uh, this would be better image. Is it clear now? Can you see Ahmedabad, Porbandar and Karachi? So check the size of this cyclone. It is, yeah, it's bigger than Gujarat only, huh? it's so big. And you know what is the wind speed over there? So in cyclones, the wind speed can reach from 50 km per hour to 250 km per hour. 250 km per hour is the wind speed. I hope you are able to understand 250 km per hour is the wind speed. This is very much sufficient to raise you up in the sky. Okay. So definitely Vayu was not that much strong. That is something like uh, uh, in cyclones also there are categories. So what I am talking about that is category 5. Vayu was a category 3.5 I think I do not remember now. Ha, so Vayu was having, Aditi is telling us, he is giving us some data. He is saying it was 150 km per hour. That is also very high. That's why the people were evacuated. Right? So, uh, ha, so Jyoti is also giving us some example. Now understanding these that how they are generated. So basically they depend upon ocean temperature, uh, they depend upon the rotation of the earth and the storms are different types like uh, cyclones, thunderstorms, uh, uh, tornadoes, uh, we, call, we give them different names. So a few differences are there. So how they get generated that is learned by fluid mechanics. What will be the path of them that is learned by fluid mechanics. What is the vacuum inside them? So actually inside them there is partial vacuum. So when I will do fluid dynamics, I will help you calculate it. Okay. So just for your fun, just for fun, I will help you calculate the vacuum in the cyclone. So the, the vacuum inside it and the power of it. That is all done by fluid mechanics and uh, basically the metrology department, metrology is involved in this study. This is very important to do because then only the Odisha government got the proper information that cyclone Titli is going to come. It will reach in India by next week. So you take proper uh, decisions, you evacuate all the people and that is how 5000 people were saved. So understanding fluid mechanics is very important if you want to understand nature. So a lot of examples are there, definitely tsunamis are there, 
oceans are there ocean tides the motion in the ocean and uh, deep sea life so basically our life is quite different from the life in the sea and believe me if you go very deep down in the sea the life is totally amazing there you will find fishes spiders and crabs whose skin is illuminating in rainbow colors they are totally transparent and inside them there are uh, like uh, wires are there which are illuminating uh, uh, what you say uh, uh, rainbow colors rainbow like colors they are giving and uh, try to understand one thing when we talk of a submarine suppose a defense submarine it goes inside water like 300 meters ghazi attack 300 meter 250 meter uh, hana do you remember 300 feet or 300 meter now the thickness of that submarine is 0.7 meters earlier the thickness of those submarines was 0.7 meters i'm talking of animals who are living like 10000 meters down 10 kilometers down in the uh, Pacific Ocean, Mariana Trench. So the pressure 300 meters below is so much that the steel should be 0.7 meters thick. But we are talking of something which is living 10 kilometers down. So what will be the strength of their skin? I do not know what will be their strength. Anna? So that life is totally different and to understand that life also we need to understand fluid mechanics, marine biology, it's a branch of marine biology. So a lot of things are there and this is a, someone is doing weather forecasting, definitely she is not involved in weather forecasting, she is a news reporter but these arrows they are made in fluid kinematics. So these are something known as vector plots but do not worry about it, it's not part of our syllabus. Now check continental drift this is another application of fluid mechanics so geologists what they do is they assume the continents to be floating bodies and by considering them as floating bodies they are able to predict by some simulations that what will be the position of the continents after millions of years where was the position of continents a millions of years earlier and the liquid in which they float that is considered to be magma Okay, so koi baat nahi, okay? uh, baut zada discuss nahi karte hai, otherwise we will get confused. So fluid mechanics is required for simulating continental drift also. Civil engineers will do it I think in uh, masters. Have you seen in YouTube? Oh, this means I am correct. Okay, let's move on. Power generation. So I told you life, nature. Our comfort is based on fluid mechanics. We need a lot of electricity. And from where does electricity come? It comes from here. Am I right? Can anyone tell me what is this? You have seen in your movies, by the way. Uh, I think Transformers. This is Hoover Dam in US California. Hoover Dam. This is the place where Transformers were uh, hidden. Okay? So, in India, a lot of, uh, a lot of them is, are there. Yes, it is one of many sources, but actually fluid mechanics is involved in all of them. So Krishna Sagar Dam is there and, uh, and uh, uh, Bhagra Nangal Dam is there, BBMB is there. Uh, bo sare dams in India, mein, especially in Himachal Pradesh, in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, some dams in Andhra Pradesh also and Karnataka also. So if we talk of the layout of these things, first of all, what is the purpose of them? Their purpose is to generate electricity and without electricity we cannot have this lecture because there will not be any internet there will not be any light there will not be any ac right Anna? so for uh, our interaction also we need electricity for talking on phone also you need to charge it so we need electricity for using internet you need electricity so for everything electricity is required for manufacturing chemical processing food processing whatever it is now how does the electricity comes Okay, so if we talk of the basic layout, this is what the basic layout is. And I think in this, civil engineers will also be very much interested. So, civil walo, here they go. How do they construct a dam? So, when we talk of hydroelectric power plant, so the turbine requires a lot of water. And how do we store a lot of water? In the dam. So, what is a dam? Dam is nothing but it is a wall which acts as a reservoir, right? Now the question is that how do they, do they design the dam? What should be the shape of the dam? So generally the shape of the dam is like this. Something like this. I think you can see in this image also. Anna? So generally the shape is like this. 
Let me draw a simple one. Let me consider this is the ship. Now what will happen? On the left hand side of the dam, you have water. And we know that water is going to apply pressure on the dam. So let us say that the pressure here, which is actually atmospheric pressure is P. And as we go down in water, the pressure will increase. So pressure on the dam will act like this. Right? Am I right? Hana? Now check. Actually it is nothing but a cantilever beam. What is a cantilever beam? It is a beam which is fixed at one end. One end. And let us say that this is the load distribution on the beam. Now how do you design the beam? So first of all, for this load distribution, you will find out the resultant force. Let us say this is the resultant force of the load. Once you get the resultant force, you draw the shear force, the shear reaction and the, sh and the bending moment, reaction moment. Hai na? You, uh, after finding out this, finding this out, what you uh, write down, you write down the reaction force and reaction moment. Now once everything is known, what you do is, you draw the shear force diagram. Maybe the shear force diagram is this. Maybe the shear force diagram is this. You draw the bending moment diagram, right? Now what do these diagrams tell you? They tell you the section where the shear force is maximum. The section where the bending moment is maximum. Hana? So shear force per unit area is shear stress. M by I is equal to sigma by Y is bending stress. Now these stresses should be minimum. For that, you will increase the area and you will increase the moment of inertia. Right? Hana? So first of all, you find out the resultant of this loading. Then you find out the reaction force and reaction moment. You draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. And based on shear force and bending moment, you decide the shape. Am I right? Is this how you design a load beam? Mechanical guys, civil guys, all of you. Is my procedure correct? Okay, now check. Here also what we have? We have a wall. Uh, we have a beam. That beam is fixed at one end. And on the beam, there is a loading. Now what you will do? You will find out the resultant force of this loading. Now this resultant force you will call as hydrostatic pressure force. And this point you will call as center of pressure. Once this is known, you will find out the reaction force and reaction moment. This will help you draw the SFD and BMD and this will give you the shear force and bending moment. Are you getting the point? So this is, in layman language, this is the procedure of designing a dam. And not only dam, other aspects also, definitely other aspects, the penstock, the turbines, the walls, the draft tube, everything is designed using the concepts of fluid. Now. Here, what was the concept of fluid? Here, the concept of fluid was, what is the load distribution? That is pressure. You have to understand pressure. Then only you will be able to predict this. And once you predict this, then you can use the concepts of SOM. So even civil engineers who are involved in design of dams or maybe irrigation channels or canals, they use these concepts, fluid mechanics concepts. And definitely, Sridhar is right. Once civil engineer will design this using fluid mechanics, using pressure, the mechanical engineer will design the blade of turbines. I am also a mechanical engineer, by the way. So I was involved in, uh, when I was working in automobile industry, I was involved in design of air intake manifolds. Okay. Design, development and manufacturing and engineering of air intake manifolds. So air intake manifold is basically a part in automobile engine. So we will discuss it sometime later. So there also I was using turbines, uh, uh, not turbines, superchargers and turbochargers in our designs. Actually, I feel very excited when I teach this subject because it has lot of applications. So this is one of them. Definitely we will talk about turbines and pumps in the later on stages of the subject and this thing I will help you calculate in chapter number three. I will not talk about this design. It is a very big subject, but I will talk of this pressure force and center of pressure.